Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're showing you how to remove marks on skin. This is a little bit of a tricky problem and we're including a frequency separation action to solve it. We got a great tutorial for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop. We've got an awesome image, but as you can see, we've got a lot of marks on skin and we see this quite a bit in retouching. We just want to get rid of these. Now, because there's a lot of different areas we need to remove and we need to make sure we get skin texture beneath these marks, we're going to kind of bring in the big guns. Now, if you guys want to follow along, you can download this sample image, PSD and Photoshop action. It's all totally free. Just follow the link right down below. All right, so we're going to start off, we're going to create a new layer and start off with some of the tools you might think to uh, remove these marks, like the spot healing brush tool. Okay, let's go ahead and grab it. It's here on the left hand side. There's our healing brush tool and then our spot healing brush tool. Now with this tool, you can sample all layers up here at the top and your type can be content aware. Now this is a really fantastic tool in general. It helps remove areas and if you wanted to get rid of like little things like that, that would work well. In this case, of course, we want to keep all of her actual skin uh, you know, parts of her skin that are there permanently, we're just removing these marks. So I'm going to just kind of paint these away and see what I can do. Now, this is an okay tool, but as we move in, you can see the skin texture doesn't look that great. Of all this area that I removed, you can see it's starting to look pretty unnatural. We're not getting that great of results. Let's move down here and see what the tool does. There we go. And you can see it's starting to just repeat textures over and over again and we're not getting the results that we require. It, it just kind of like makes her back look worse. So that's usually my go-to tool first off is start with this tool and for like small objects in the background and things like that it works well but there's too much detail here for this tool to work. Okay so we're going to delete that layer that's a no. Then you might think okay well it's a big area let's try the patch tool. Now the patch tool is kind of like the spot healing brush tool for bigger areas. So here we can set this to content aware there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer, make sure this says sample all layers. And then we can try some bigger areas and then try and move that over there. And there we go. Let's try and move that over there. This is the patch tool. And as you can see, it's <laughs> it's doing worse. It's, it's not the tool for the job either. So we're just going to hit undo a couple of times. And we're, now we're going to move on to our best tool for the job. This is the regular healing brush tool. Now with this tool, it's a little bit more work because you have to choose your own texture, but because you have more control, you can decide what goes in each specific place. So this is going to be like round one of this job. And then for round two, that's when we're going to bring in frequency separation. Okay. So we've got our regular healing brush tool selected and that's J It's a keyboard shortcut there. And then up at the top, just make sure where it says sample, you want to hit current and below. That's going to let you do this on a new layer. Okay. So we're going to zoom in here and I'm going to hold alt or option to sample my point. And this is important because as we saw earlier, you have to get the skin texture right, especially on a big area like this. It's most of the image. If it doesn't look good, uh, it everything's ruined. <laughs> so we're going to hold alt or option right next to the area we want to place. This is going to allow us to sample this texture. Now, as I paint over this area, it's going to take the texture from wherever I sample and the color from wherever I paint, and it's going to bring those two areas together. It's going to merge the texture from my sample point and the color from wherever I paint. And as you can see, it's doing a much, much better job in these areas where skin texture is so, so important. There we go. Because I am choosing the texture myself, and I'm just making sure that I do a good job. Now, when I'm choosing skin texture for these areas, it's super important to choose areas that are relatively similar. I don't want to choose skin texture, for instance, over here and try to sample it in there because then look at that. I have a weird, uh, <laughs> hairy back, right? <laughs> it's just <laughs> skin is very different all over the body, right? So you want to make sure you're sampling from a similar area and that's going to help you create more realistic results. There we go. So this is looking good and you might have to hold alt or option and sample a few different times before getting the right thing. Now, when it comes to like these little marks and things like that, if you have to set, uh, paint over those, that's okay. Uh, because some of these tools uh, work on larger areas, you can always add them back later with a layer mask, which is what we're gonna be doing. Okay, so let me just move in here and make sure all of this looks good. We want all of our texture to look really nice and uh, consistent throughout our subject's skin. Super important, there we go. 
And now up here, again, we want to sample a similar area. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option, sample the skin over there, and then we're going to paint it in right over here. Fantastic. So although this doesn't seem like it's kind of a hard thing to do, um, because we have this much skin and this much skin texture, and it's you know such a big part of the image, it it actually is kind of tricky to to remove like these skin tag uh, skin marks. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. Now you don't have to get perfect with this step because we are going to be bringing in frequency separation, but you can still see a little bit of where that skin strap was, but that's okay. We're going to fix all that up with frequency separation in just a little bit. Okay, so we're going to continue to move down this area again. I'm just holding Alt or Option a bunch of different times. So select and then paint in a new area. Select and then paint in a new area. So that's that's kind of the key is I just have my left hand um, on the Alt or Option key and then I'm painting with my right hand. So I can sample and paint, sample and paint. Now this works for small details like this really well, but what happens when we have something like this down below which has so much detail? That's where frequency separation is going to come in. So let's go ahead and do our best job with removing all these little marks and things like that. Again, if you have to remove any of these little moles, that's totally okay at this stage because we can add them back. So I'm just going to try to get like the smoothest results I possibly can. And then I'm going to use a layer mask at the end to add it all back because you want to make sure uh, to not remove any permanent marks from your subject's skin unless they specifically ask you to. There we go. So you can see looking really good, getting a lot of good skin texture in here. Fantastic. Not perfect, but off to a great, great start. There we go. And let's paint that in there. Okay, here for the little border, we're just going to bring, there we go, texture in there. And then I'm going to try to get this little bit there too. Fantastic. All right, you can see a little bit of tricky, kind of giving me a little bit of trouble, but that's okay. We knew this was going to be hard. That's why we're making a tutorial about it. If it was super easy, you probably wouldn't be watching this. <laughs> you could probably just do it and figure it out on your own. Okay, there we go. We just have this one area here. I'm going to go ahead and just remove these little moles there. Don't worry, I am going to add those back. It's super important you leave your subject skin. Uh, I always say like when it comes to retouching, anything that's permanent, you want to leave that exactly how it is, right? If it's here today, gone tomorrow, that's okay to remove. But um, if it's permanent, that's a, that's a part of who that person is. So um, the only reason I'm removing them now is because we have such large areas to, uh, to kind of rebuild that it just helps make my job a little bit easier at this stage. And then it's super easy to mask those in at the end. Okay. So this is looking pretty good, I would say, overall. Like, we got rid of a lot of the, you know, skin marks. So let's just make that visible and invisible. And we're just going to call this Healing Brush. You guys can download this PSD. Just follow the link down below so you can kind of dissect everything. That's all the Healing Brush. So we're looking pretty good, but, like, you can totally tell, right? Uh, like, look at this. You can totally tell that uh, <laughs> there's still, like, a mark under there. The skin is a different color, and um, we, we need to fix that up. So... To do this, we're going to bring in frequency separation. Now, there's a totally free action. Just follow the link down below. Basically, what this does is it separates the color from your image and the texture from your image. Okay, and here's how you do it. So go up to your window and then down to actions. Now, I'm going to just pull this out and we'll show you how to load this action. So we're going to go ahead and click on this little icon right here. That's our menu icon. And we're going to go down to where it says load actions. There we go. Now, here in your download, you'll just see a Photoshop Actions folder. There we go. There's an install guide in here. There's the Photoshop Action and a quick install guide PDF. So let's just go to the Photoshop, uh, Photoshop Action. Just click on this frequency separation.atn and hit open. There we go. That's going to load that right into Photoshop. So here you can see there's an 8 bit and a 16 bit. 8 bit is for JPEGs, 16 bit, that's going to be like TIFFs and PSDs. To check that, just go to image down here to mode and see what is checked. You can see I've got an 8 bit checked. That means this image is 8 bit. So I should use the action that says 8 bit. Most of the time it's going to be 8 bit unless you're using on like a raw image, something like that. Okay. So frequency separation 8 bit. Let's hit play on that. Now let's hit continue. It's going to ask us to blur the skin texture. Now you just want to make sure you blur it until you can't see texture detail in your subject's skin. So we're going to go to about 8 pixels. Looks pretty good for now. Let's hit okay. 
And then you've got instructions, but I'm going to just show you how to do it. So you don't need to read those instructions, but you can on your own time. Okay, so what that gives you is basically a group. And remember, all this does is separate out your texture from your color. So your texture is on this top layer, this gray layer, that's where the texture is, and your color is on this bottom one. So if I just turn this texture off and on, you can see I have texture, now I don't have texture, okay? This layer underneath it, that's where all the color is. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna click here, and I'm gonna actually create a new layer between those, and I can actually just paint in with my brush tool whatever color I want. So for instance, let's just grab like this yellow color from the flower, right? Now, if I decide to paint right over here, you can see I'm painting with this yellow color, but look at that. We have skin texture over top of wherever I'm painting. And the reason is, is because this layer here, this frequency separation HF, which stands for high frequency, that's the texture, this is a texture layer, okay? So it doesn't matter what I put below it, right? I could just, you know, grab my brush tool and paint with a different color. Grab my subject's hair color and paint with that. I can put anything that I want here. Look at this. I could just grab the skin color. This is with the regular brush tool. I can grab any color that I want and paint it in here. And because I have this layer right above it, that's gonna be my texture. Okay, so this is the real key to using this because right in the, all of this area, the texture is totally fine. The skin texture is good. I don't need to worry about that. It's just this color. I have a large area where the color is, uh, it's a little bit lighter, a little bit more red, and I, I still have some kind of like visible marks. Not you know, not texture marks. We took care of that already with this layer here, with the healing brush layer, but you still have this kind of stuff. So what we're gonna do is basically use our paint brush to paint away this detail. It's gonna keep the skin texture, because remember that's on its own layer, but it's going to allow us to paint away all these like light and dark colored marks. Okay, so here's how we do it. We just click on our low frequency layer and click on a new layer. So you just want a layer in between these. Okay, I'll just double click and call it paint skin. There we go. So when you download this, you can kind of see what we're doing here. So B for the brush tool, and then you want to hold Alt or Option, and that's going to allow you to sample colors. You can see Alt or Option, I can sample dark skin, light skin, and I can just paint wherever I want. But it's important, like I should paint dark skin where it's dark, and light skin where it's light, right? We don't want to do a weird thing and make someone look totally, uh, you know, you can, <laughs> as you can imagine, make someone look super weird. So we wanna go nice and subtle, and for that I recommend using a low flow. So up here at the top, you have your flow of your brush. This just allows you to create a buildup effect. So if you're using like a pressure sensitive tablet, you can use a flow of maybe 20%. If you're using a mouse or a trackpad, um, I recommend using a flow of like 5%, okay? You want a slow buildup effect. All right, so I'm gonna bring my flow down to about 10% right now. And now here's the key. We're gonna hold Alt or Option and sample these colors right? Like this is a light color that runs in between there, right? And I want it to look more like the color above. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option, sample the color right above it. There we go. And then start painting right below it. Okay. So let's just turn that off and on to see what we're doing. Sample right above it, hold Alt or Option, and then paint right in there. Okay. Don't worry about the skin texture because that's handled on this other layer. Okay. So sample right next to it, the color that you want, and simply paint it in. Now this is like a tool of retouching professionals all around the world. This is one of the most frequently used, very, very important skin retouching tools because it is so powerful, literally allows you to paint the color of skin that you want. There we go. And have texture on a different layer. There we go. Now it does take, you know, a little bit of an artistic eye and take your time. But if you mess up, you can turn this layer off and on and, and start over again. You know, there's no, there's no way to permanently mess anything up. So Alt or Option here, sample that darker color, and we're just going to paint this in, right? I'm just using the brush tool, large soft edge brush with a low flow. It's going to help me create this like buildup effect. I'm going to do the same thing up here. We're just going to smooth out this color underneath the texture because we don't want it to look like there was ever any marks there, right? So we need we need to reduce all signs of there being possible marks there to begin with. There we go. And you want to kind of be zoomed out. Like notice I'm not super zoomed in for this. You want to be zoomed out so you can see the image kind of like as a whole. You don't want to be caught up, you know, trying to focus in on all the tiny little details. 
Just keep in mind like where the skin gets lighter and where it gets darker. There we go. Can take care of this area too. Fantastic. And this is looking really, really good. Let's go ahead and zoom up there. Just make sure. There we go. So let's turn this off and on. Even look up here where it wasn't that bad. Notice how it's a little bit blotchy before and here in the after we smoothed all that out. Okay. All of that looks really, really nice and smooth. And you can use this exact same uh, frequency separation action to do high-end skin retouching on your subject too. So it's not just for removing marks and blemishes. You can do it for skin smoothing and all kinds of really beautiful uh, skin retouching. There we go. Fantastic. We even have a pro tutorial on flurn.com that's specific to frequency separation. And I'll link to that uh, down below if you want to learn much more about frequency separation. All right, so let's just turn that off and on. Look at that, I mean, really, really good results. I just wanna make sure we zoom out and see like, okay, how does this look? You don't wanna be super zoomed in. Again, you wanna make sure you zoom out and see how it looks. And I think we're looking great, I really do. I think it looks nice and natural and I can't really tell. Let's check, take a look at the before and after. Let's zoom in there. Here's our before and our after. Anywhere that's left over. Now, if you do have any texture issues left over, you can actually handle those on the high frequency, uh, high frequency layer using the clone stamp tool. Just make sure where it says sample, you set this to current layer. That's super important. If it's current and below, it's gonna look all messed up and weird. But I can just clone stamp any texture issues that I have away. There we go. And kind of fix it up my very last step. And as you can see, I have all my texture intact. So skin texture looks great. And I was able to paint those colors in between those. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and group those together. Let's just show you the before and after. Here we go, before and after. We've got one more final step to do, and we talked about this earlier. It's that making sure we have all of our, like, you know, moles or skin tags or things like that that are permanent. We want those to be just as visible as they were before. So just put a layer mask on that and hit B for your brush tool and then paint black over these areas. And that'll make sure to just hide this effect over top of everything we want to make sure that, you know, any permanent marks that your subject has, you want to make sure that those remain, right? So I removed a couple of those in the process. All right. So I want to just make sure to paint those back. And believe it or not, this is a good way to do this because it allows me to create clean areas of skin underneath these moles and just paint them back. There we go. Again, anything that is going to be like temporary, you can remove with your subject's uh, permission. Anything that's permanent, you should leave in, unless your subject specifically asks you to remove something. All right, there we go. Just making sure I did actually bring back all those marks and everything looks good, yeah. We are fantastic. So there's our before and our after. Look at that, professional results. Man, I'm super happy with that. I hope you are too. Very well done. All righty. Now, click on the link below. You guys can download this free Photoshop action. It works for so many different types of retouching. It's totally awesome. Thanks so much for watching. As always, a free way to support the channel is to leave us a like and let me know in a comment right down below what you'd like to see from Flurn. Hit that subscribe button. We'll send you more free Photoshop tutorials. Thanks again. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone.